Hi everyone, in this video we're going to discuss the equation of a straight line graph. This video is a recap video, so we'll go over the concepts quite quickly. Firstly, we'll look at the standard form of a straight line graph and what each component means. And next, we'll consider questions where we have to determine the equation of a straight line graph given the gradient and a point. Now the standard form for a straight line graph is y is equal to mx plus c. Or you might see that as y is equal to ax plus b, or they could use different variables, but normally the x and the y stay the same. So if we look at the components of the equation, the m refers to the gradient. And the c value refers to the y-intercept. Now what you'll find is that straight line graphs are not always in this format. If they're in this format, it's quite nice to work with them. If they're not, you can rearrange them so that they are in this format. The way I know something is a straight line graph is that the x and y variables are only to the power of one. So you don't have y to the power of two or x to the power of two or x to the power of negative one. They just have the exponent of one. So let's consider the first example of an equation I have. I've got y is equal to 2x minus 3. So 2x, or the 2, refers to the gradient. And the gradient will be change in y over change in x. And so the change in y is 2 and the change in x is 1. The y-intercept will be negative 3, so 0 and negative 3. If I wanted to draw a rough sketch of that graph, there's my axes, y and x. I know that the gradient's positive, so it's an increasing graph, and I know that my y-intercept is negative 3. So negative 3 will be my y-intercept. It rises 2 and runs 1. So a point on my graph 2 up from negative 3 is negative 1, and 1 right would be 1, and then there is my straight line graph. y is equal to 2x minus 3. Now let's look at the equation on the right of the first one. I've got 3y plus 2x is 12. Now that is a straight line graph, but it's not in standard form, so I can't easily see my gradients or my y-intercept. So let's rearrange the way it's written. So I have 3y is equal to negative 2x plus 12, because I subtracted 2x from both sides. And now I'll divide each term by 3. So I get y is equal to negative 2 thirds x plus 12 divided by 3 is 4. So my gradient is negative 2 over 3. And my y-intercept is positive 4. So if I was to draw a rough sketch of that graph, my y-intercept is 4. Now, since my gradient's negative, it means my graph is decreasing. So instead of rising 2, it's going to fall 2. So my y-value will be 2 less than 4. And it's going to run 1, 2, 3. So a point on the line would be 3 and 2. And so my line would look something like that. Okay, and you could label it either by using the original format or by using the gradient intercept format. Now the next graph, I have y is equal to 2. So if you think about the standard form, y is equal to mx plus c, Surely the gradient will be zero, which means that I'm going to have no rise over my run. So surely my graph is going to have to be horizontal. But where does it cut the y-axis? Surely it has to cut the y-axis at two. So my graph will be a horizontal graph that is parallel to the x-axis and it cuts the y-axis at 2. Now my last equation is not in the standard form. 
but I can use y is equal to 2 as a guideline to help me draw x is equal to negative 3. Another way to think about y is equal to 2 is that no matter what the x value is, the y value is always 2. So similarly, with the graph of y, x is equal to negative 3, no matter what the y value is, x will always be negative 3. So it makes sense that the graph will be parallel to the y-axis, where before my graph was parallel to the x-axis. Now another thing to consider is the gradient. Now the gradient, it will have a rise, but my run will be zero. So in other words, my gradient will be undefined. So it makes sense that I can't write the equation of this graph in the standard form. Now next I've given you some sketches of graphs and we need to write down the equation. Again, we're going to write down our equation as far as possible in standard form. So the first graph, let's consider the gradient will be change in y over change in x. So my change in y is 6 and my change in x is 4. Now, since my graph is decreasing, I'll actually consider 6 goes down to 0 for my y values. So it's negative 6 out of 4. And so I'll get negative 3 out of 2. My y-intercept is 6. So my equation will be y is equal to gradient negative 3 out of 2 x plus y-intercept, which is c. In question number 2, I already know my y-intercept is 4, and my gradient, the change in y, or the rise, is 1, and my run, or my change in x, is 2. So my gradient is a half. That means my equation is y is equal to half x plus 4. Now, in my third example, I've got vertical and horizontal lines. Let's start with the vertical. So a vertical line is always going to be an x is equal to something line because the gradient is undefined. And x in this case is equal to 3. You can see that because x is 3 at the x-intercept and it's 3 later on. So no matter what y is, x will always be 3. For my horizontal line, my gradient will be 0. So y is equal to 0x. And my y-intercept is going to be 2. Because it doesn't matter any point I choose on this graph, the y-value will always be 2. The last example I'm discussing in this video is where you have a straight line graph with a gradient, but you don't know the y-intercept. Now I'm going to show you two methods for approaching this. The one will use the standard form, y is equal to mx plus c standard form and the other way is using a different version of a straight line graph formula which is y minus y1 is equal to m x minus x1 some people refer to this as the slope point or the point slope form and um, we'll get to that second so the first way to go about this is you know what the gradient is. So you know that m is negative 2. So y is equal to negative 2x plus c. Now the next thing I need to find out is what the value of c is. Now the thing about a straight line graph is the line is made up of all the possible points that would abide by that formula. So if you take a point that's already given, it has to abide by what the formula is. So if I substitute 5 and negative 3, where 5 is the x value and negative 3 is the y value, then I should be able to find out what c is. So negative 3 is equal to negative 2, the x value is 5, plus c. And then I can simplify this equation, and I get that c is going to be 7. So my equation of my graph is y is equal to negative 2x plus 7. 
Now this method is completely fine to use. I'm going to show you another method and it's up to you if you want to use it or not. I generally only teach the second method in grade 11. Now, like I've said, some people call this format the point slope format. And if you'd like to see where it comes from, I've added a link in the description of the video. And what the, the slope or the gradient is still M, but you also have a point. So the nice thing about this method is that you can substitute in straight away. So I'm going to say y minus my y1, which will be my point. If I consider my point, it will be 5 and negative 3. So y minus negative 3 is equal to my gradient, which was negative 2, x minus x1, which is 5. So y plus 3 is equal to negative 2x plus 10. And then I can rearrange what I have. y is equal to negative 2x plus 7. As you can see, I get exactly the same equation. The benefit of using the point slope format is that you get your equation in standard form in one less step. But it's completely up to you which format you use. You might be more comfortable with the standard form format where you work out m and work out c or you might be more comfortable using this point slope format. It is important that you understand both because some teachers teach one and other teachers teach the other. I personally alternate between the two depending on which one I want to use. That brings me to the end of this quick recap video of determining the equation of a straight line.